Look at this mass of ants and their larvae. A happy little village, don't you think? How nice. But these ants have a dark side. These are raider ants. Raiders, you see, are pillagers, like the Vikings, like pirates. Their baby ants are fed through invading the nests of other ants, because the larvae demand, above all else, flesh. It all begins with ants on scouting duty. Although they're blind, these ants wander outside the nest, exploring with their antennae, which are full of intricate chemical and touch-sensing cells. Sooner or later, the scouts encounter something intriguing, a pupa from another ant species, in this case, tetramorium, or pavement ants. The scout spends a while investigating the pupa, tapping it all over, and checking if it could be a healthy meal for her sisters back home in the nest. Eventually, she decides that yes, this is a good one. Now, she returns home to let everyone know. Along the way, she lays an invisible pheromone trail marking the path between nest and food. Back at the nest, the scout emits a puff of another type of pheromone, drawing the attention of many of her sisters. These other ants drop what they're doing and are drawn toward the source. It's called recruitment. These workers all join together in what's called a raiding party. We think this amounts to a show of force. Together, these ants can fight off any defenders in the prey nest. The raiders follow the trail pheromone back to the food. Encountering no resistance this time, the raid will conclude with the ants dragging the food pieces back to the nest, where they'll be devoured by the hungry larvae and workers. To be clear, predatory behavior like this is natural and normal. I don't fault these ants in the slightest for their way of life. And in fact, I have frequently aided and abetted their hunger when I personally dug up hundreds of fire ant colonies to collect pupae to feed to these little baby raider ants. Since fire ants are a destructive pest species in the U.S., I didn't feel bad about it either. They were Solenopsis invicta, by the way. For etymological sake, Solenopsis means something like the appearance of a pipe, based on Greek solen and opsis, which I do not understand in the slightest. Invicta, on the other hand, means invincible, and makes perfect sense with these ants' nasty sting and their incredible ability to rally a defense. Still, they can be defeated using long socks, a shovel, and a bucket. I don't endorse projecting human cultural ideas onto animals. They're just living their lives in a way that makes sense and works for them. But I do think that ant group raids are pretty neat. The word raid was of course chosen because it's evocative and descriptive of how the ants find food as invaders of other ant nests. These ants could just as easily have been named for something else. For instance, their scientific name tells another story. They're part of genus Oocereia, from Greek words oo for egg and sereia meaning antenna. In other words, they're the ants with the egg-shaped antennae, named for their distinctive final antennomere, or final antennal segment. These ants are cousins of the so-called army ants. They're all part of the Doraline subfamily, which you might call the spear ants from Greek dori. Army ants are called as such because the Europeans who described them likened them to a military on the move as they march in long lines by the hundreds of thousands. The raider ants are smaller and have much lower populations, but raider ants and army ants share a taste for insect flesh and the ability to work together to find food and overwhelm defenders. Other bugs run at the site if they know what's good for them.